someone left me a comment under the Gospel of Thomas video and it showed that they left it three weeks ago. I get notifications, but it, it does not show me. And I just saw it today and then like, I can't see it anymore. I don't know where it is. I don't know where to find it. I can't respond to it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I am still, um, and maybe I need to like sit down one day and really just go through this whole dashboard YouTube studio type of thing because like I don't know like where to even find messages or <laughs> anything like that and I really wanted to respond to the person because they really fucked me up <laughs> it was really good and they highlighted something that I didn't even recognize myself and so I want to go back into reading um Genesis because they mentioned how when Adam got kicked out of um out of Eden he was um there was like a, a civilization already existing and so it fucked me up and so now I'm about to go down a, a rabbit a rabbit hole so if that is you I am sorry that I did not respond to your comment like I swear to god I did not try to like ignore it or anything like it really did fuck me up and YouTube just doesn't show me so if you if anyone else had left a comment on something I have not seen it because only thing I have, only comment that I have seen was spam. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's it. Um, so, it shows zero. It shows nothing. Even though the person, I don't know if you had did it, posted it, and then deleted it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but I just wanted to know, to let y'all know that I wasn't um, trying to be too good <laughs> for someone <laughs> To respond to someone's comment, especially when you taking out the time and energy to leave a comment. Because I know for myself in my own YouTube usage, it takes energy to press like comment and then type in and then sit. Um, so I did want to say that and highlight that. And that really fucked me up. And I really want to like read more into that and like look into that because that's dope. Um, it's funny how like you could read past. I think that's the cool thing about like whether it's like religions or just books in general, like you could read a passage about something you could read a thousand times and there'll be like this small detail that you missed. Um, and, or, you know, you just glossed over or it didn't really resonate. And then it takes somebody else's cognition, um, their awareness, their keen eye, um, their intellect to capture it. And I think that's what I want to continue to promote is discussion rather than to press and push someone to choose religion. Um, <coughs> I just like, I just like religious topics. Um, they're really cool to me. I rather indulge in religions and different stuff like that than to indulge in celebrity gossip, <laughs> honestly. Um, so yes, I just wanted to say that, like, I am so sorry. Um, that was definitely not intentional. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was unintentional. Um, so while I'm here, because <laughs> I had zero intention of making a video today. Um, but while I'm here, which, what should we do? <laughs> I am currently right now uploading a video. Um, I have a couple of more that I need to upload too. Because I hate when I throw my own self off of my schedule um, because I've noticed like I need to like post the videos immediately or not immediately, but within like a reasonable time frame, because if not, like I will lose my own like energy into the video <laughs> when I'm posting it. But I also be like, well, I'll write in the description, like what the fuck Could, was I even talking about in that video? I don't know. So I can't give you like a clear, concise thing on like, what was I talking about? Um, but I just wanted to let somebody know that. Also, um, just thank you for my subscribers, um, which is cool. Um, but like, yeah, like, I don't know. And I also try to detach from this channel. So I go onto my other account to just watch when I'm watching videos. I only log into this one when I'm uploading videos. So I really don't, I really do need to like sit down and like 
<laughs> figure everything out. Cause it looks just confused. Like I wish I could show you how like confusing it is. It looks, and it looks simple, but it also like makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> absolutely no sense. Um, they also, I don't know if I said this before, but they, they had opened up to allow me to do community posts now. Um, I guess I unlocked it. You got to unlock features and shit for YouTube. Like it's a fucking video game. Um, like I hate that because like they unlock features based off of, I guess like your subscribers or how many views you're doing or a uh, video and content that you have. But it's like, let somebody like unlock all that shit all at once. And then let somebody like really get in the bag and like do the shit because <laughs> It's just like, why unlock it at this time? Um, so I'm now I'm thinking like, well, damn, what, what people could do that I can't do. Um, but going back to the community, I do want to do like some inspirational quote, not quotes, but inspirational messages and stuff like that, um, for you guys. Um, and I need to get myself back into the rhythm of writing because I feel like I am losing because I'm not <laughs> writing as much as I used to. I feel like. I'm losing my zhush with writing. Um, like, I feel like I'm overthinking a, a sentence. Like, can I even make a complete sentence? I don't even feel like I know how to properly write right now. So I need to get back into that groove. Um, especially if I fully decide if I'm going to school, which I am. I'm pretty school. I'm pretty sure. I need to check up on them too. Like, hey, uh, I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything from anybody right now. Um, can you tell I'm freaking out? <laughs> um, sorry, I'm like in my head right now. Just insane. Insanity. Um, yeah. So while I'm here, um, let's just do the second second part of the Anima Mundi. Did I post one already? No, I didn't. Dang, I'm way behind because I definitely. Okay, I'll just be out and do things. Okay. <laughs> you know, can we talk about timing right now? Um. <laughs> What your topic of discussion is and the goals in which you want to do something, you have to uh, realize that it's going to take a different time, time, time frame for you compared to people who are um, wanting to do more fluff stuff, right? So I lately have been in, like I've been telling you guys before, like I've been like hella into and I don't know if that was just Scorpio season that it was happening because Scorpios I know for sure are really big on like comparing themselves to other people and just constantly looking at like what other people have and be like well why not me right um and I because I'm a Scorpio moon and a Scorpio something else I feel like I got two Scorpio placements in my chart um but I I've had that really bad since a kid, um, looking at things and then being like, why I couldn't, da, 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 right? So, like, I could see somebody's, I used to be like, it would be, it would be like, I'll see a girl and she's with her dad and I will be like, why she get to have a dad? Why she get to go through life with a father and I don't? <laughs> or if I see somebody and they're interacting with my mom, then I'll be like, why they get to have her niceness? <laughs> like, why couldn't I have her niceness? Or, um, or more recently is looking at like people's YouTube views and stuff like that. And it will be like, why they get to have just instantly this amount of views or these amount of opportunities come and my shit is like one or two views. <laughs> and so, so it was like, what you got to do going on, what other people got going on is two separate, separate things for one. What I have for you is going to be totally different. Three, what they doing <laughs> may be different than what you doing or what they have to do or what all of the, that it t entails is something that you don't even want yourself and you've been saying you want the complete opposite. So stop comparing. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> um, but also just really honoring our timings, honoring... Um, 
our flow, honoring when we, um, our processes and stuff like that, because, you know, um, things sometimes for you may take, you know what I mean? Like you can't put in a, put in a pot of corn on a, on the stove versus a pot roast is going to take two different type of timings, right? I'm always making a food analogy, but you know, the pot roast is going to take about a couple of hours to cook. And especially if you want that flavor to fully be fully up in it. Right. Whereas a pot of corn on the cob going to take about a good hour and a half. Right. Um, but the corn not going to be like, well, why can't I be in the oven a little bit longer? Right? Or why am I up on the stove? Why I'm not in the oven. And the pot roast is like, why I got to be in here for four hours? <laughs> Why can't I be like the corn? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're not going to do that. So, and their processes require different things. An hour of cooking a pot roast, but you're going to have salmonella. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to die of food poisoning. Where <laughs> it's going to be tough. It's going to be thick. It's not like it's going to be falling. You know, they ain't going to have nothing. It's just going to be raw. Whereas the corn, three hours corn is mush. You know what I mean? It's overcooked. It's dried out to the bone. <laughs> um, so can we apply that to our lives? <laughs> um, excuse me. Whew. Hit the shit out of my chest too. I ain't gonna hold you. Uh, let's. So I want to, since we are here making a video. I'm cold <laughs> and I've been freezing myself all day trying to be hot in the pants <laughs> it didn't even work <laughs> and all the attention that I got today was from creeps <laughs> and then following me <laughs> in the train <laughs> so irritated <laughs> Ir fucking See, that's what I get trying to show my body <laughs> so and then left without my thing and then <laughs> and my gym crush wasn't even there. <laughs> None of them. <laughs> no, I can't be at the gym today. I was like, let me go home. <laughs> clearly, today's not the day I'm going to work out because clearly, <laughs> I'm kidding. I definitely worked out. I think I did like over an hour. <laughs> I don't know why I just rubbed my face all extra out like that. Where was I going? Oh, Ooh, feels good. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I say something really quick? Um, <laughs> actually, we're not going to do it. <clears throat> Anima Monday. Uh, there is a discussion that I didn't finish on my own the last video that I made. And so I wanted to do that too. Um, so you guys, um, first <laughs> house clothes and ropes and stuff like that. So when I moved into my apartment, I started to dress like really cute and classy, you know, sometimes not cute and classy, but I use <laughs> mainly the times I was nude, right? And naked. Or I would have like some booty shorts on with a crop top or like a tank top and shit. Um, or I would have like this little cheap silk, uh, cause you know, <laughs> we gotta start where we at. Uh, <laughs> little cheap, cheap, cheap little like lingerie set from Sheen. Okay, five dollars. <laughs> Look at real three dollars. <laughs> uh, you know, I will wear stuff like that, but real cute and like I don't know, you just like real sexy. And I always was like, you know, like. For me, I was like, I want to, like, I can't wait to, like, live with my man because I was like, I want to show this booty cheeks, like, you know, and this boy shorts and, like, do extra out shit, like, cooking, but, you know, make my ass jiggle a little or something, right? Or, like, being over, dropping the low and shit for no fucking reason, just on some, like, enticing, seductress type of things, right? But I've noticed that when I had moved back here, moved in with family, you know, my aunt started giving me <laughs> this ugly ass robe, which is so comfortable. First of all, I just want to say this, this robe is so comfortable. And if it was just a little bit bigger, I would just be snuggled. Um, but, um, this is, this is my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And I'm so happy that winter is, <laughs> has came so that I could be in this. Well, fall has come. The cold has come for this. However, like the, the, <laughs> like she she buys me like Walmart <laughs> pajamas and stuff like that 
and it don't give right which is good like it's not supposed to nothing is supposed to be given what it needs to be gave here (laughs) right so it's okay for the environment that I am in, right? Like I will wear as ugly as as, as I can, um, living with family. <laughs> I could do, I could just be as ugly as I want to be, um, and that is fine. However, I thought about like, you know, when we dress like that, when we have a partner, it kind of takes the sexy out of it, right? It takes the cuteness out of it, and um, I don't know. I'm just like. You could do better. <laughs> but I just think about like <laughs> like I just like I just feel like I was just raised to look at like ugly loungewears in a house. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm just like I'm just like no. <laughs> and so I wonder I wonder my theory is no, <laughs> uh, look, I'm answering my question already yet before I even answer. But do y'all think that these ugly wares is the cause for men cheating? <laughs> and then I said, hell no, because they just go cheat if they want to cheat. Right. Um, but I just, I just wonder, like, I just thought about how, like, the littlest thing, like what you wear around the house can change your confidence um more so I'm not talking about men but no but really about confidence and really about your body and the way you view your body because I felt like the sexier I had dressed in my house the more weight I lost um and it's because I'm seeing constantly my curves my shape my everything right um my dents and my flab and all the all the things um Whereas when I'm in this role, bitch, I done got big as fuck in this role. <laughs> oh yeah. Big as fuck. Big a whole house. Okay, because I was eating a whole house, okay? Because I was wrapped up and I ain't had to show no nothing. And so you really could get past yourself when you don't show nothing. And I used to do that before I even moved into my place. I used to wear sweats and you know, things like that. And a lot of my fashion has changed tremendously. Um, from And I was just thinking, like, my mom bought me some sweats the other day. And it was ugly as hell. And I was like, the outfits that I buy myself and the outfits she buys me are two totally different outfits. And her outfits are like, hey, put this on. This was a good price. It's a good quality for Walmart. You're going to be warm. You can go on, catch the train, and get on, get out, right? And my outfits is like, okay, girl, it's giving, it's giving waistline. It's giving snatched, okay? It's giving supermodel. <laughs> it's giving Savage Fenty, okay? Savage Fenty model. Savage Fenty runway. <laughs> Cause I'm trying to manifest. <laughs> no, but on some serious shit, like, I just think about how fashion um, and what we wear and how we wear it can change the trajectory of our lives in a sense right and it changes your mood it changes the things you want to do it changes all of those things like when I'm wearing some really cute uh up-to-date sweats um then I'm feeling myself right and I'm feeling good and I'm looking good and I feel that I'm looking good right and I you know could dress it up dress it out but if I wear the sweats that my mama trying to get me (laughs) <laughs> I, I don't know I would just go be at home like, I don't know I don't know um but I just thought that was funny next like I told you guys in the last video that I had watched this really amazing video called I mean movie called ramen girl so I watched ramen girl and then I watched everybody's fine yesterday so with the ramen girl the ramen girl the premise of the story was this girl had moved into Brittany Murphy had moved into moved to um Tokyo. No, she moved to Japan. Is Tokyo in Japan? <laughs> I told y'all I don't know facts, okay? I don't know. I don't know and I definitely don't know geography. Like all I know is LA. <laughs> 
you can't tell me nowhere else. It was funny because when I went to the taco place earlier today, um, they had, um, it is, it's their capital. Um, I had, um, they had saw, I had this, they saw this, I saw this frame that they had, um, and it had like all these like streets. It was like street names. And I was looking and I was like, dang, I know where every motherfucking last one of them motherfucking streets are. And I was like, I am truly, truly an LA girl. <laughs> and I love it. Um, but no, like I literally know knew everything. Like they had Mulholland, they had Beverly, they had Santa Monica Boulevard, they had Highland, they had, you know, <laughs> all of them. And I was like, every last one I know. They even had Crescent Heights. I was like, oh, you guys put Crescent Heights. You, If you know where Crescent Heights is, you know L.A. Especially me because I went to Crescent Heights high, uh, Middle School. I mean, uh, not middle school, uh, elementary. <laughs> okay, period. But to know Crescent Heights, you know L.A. That's like a random spot, you know, like a random street to know. It's not like Westy. <clears throat> so anyways, um, so I was watching. So she moved to... I'm going to just say Japan because I don't know if it was Tokyo or not. But in Tokyo, it is in Japan. It's the capital. Uh, if you didn't know, like me. Um, you know what, though? I was thinking that, like, because I was watching these um, videos on what Korean people think of black people in in Korea. And they were interviewed by a black dude. Um, and they were saying, like, you know, of course, like, the stereotypes of this, some think that we're strong, some things that we that we have edge and, like, creative, and they love us in hip-hop and <laughs> shit like that, and, like, we're good dancers and shit of that nature. Um, and then some of them said that they would be open to dating a black person if they, if they you know, have a vibe and they speak the language, then it would be great. Um, and they were saying that with white people, they see white people more often, so they're used to they're pretty much used to white people um and the thing I was thinking about was like damn like white people really really are, were able to have an afforded and allotted leisure and being able to like leisurely try different things really leisurely get immersed into other cultures learn about other cultures learn about other languages and be fluent in those languages go and travel to those places and stuff like that whereas black people we typically don't because we have to focus on survival we don't have time for the leisure right because we have to see how we're going to make ends meet how we're going to survive in america like you know what i mean like how we're not gonna get shot up at by the police or a gang member um and i just think about my own life i was i spent 30 years trying to get out of the fucking hood and still have not achieved this goal <laughs> still have not achieved this goal and um and so i never had time to really learn about other cultures hell i didn't even have time to learn about other states <laughs> in in u.s in the u.s you know um and I know for me, like I told y'all, like I want a lifestyle of travel. Love, my whole entire life is just me going like slowly to like places and like exploring and just exploring the world and exploring the wonders of nature. Um, and I just think like, damn, like I'm very intelligent. I'm very smart. I could retain things. I'm really great at retaining. Like I could read Spanish. Um. Like, I could get the gist of what Spanish is. Like, I'll know words or, like, I could figure out the context of certain words and, like, like oh, this is what the sentence means. Um, so, I'm really good at reading Spanish, but I can't hear. Um, so, I'm not good with hearing it and, like, the conversation and I'm not good and I don't feel comfortable speaking it. Um, but that was only because I took Spanish class and I only was able to take Spanish one. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I didn't even get to go, like, in further into it to where I could be fluent in Spanish. And a lot of that was just because I didn't have, like, those friends. In the, in the times when I was studying, I didn't have those friends to help me keep going at it, right? And expand on it and to stay comfortable so that my brain is still fresh so me to take the next class. Um, because I forget. <laughs> I'll forget and then I'll freak out and then I'll just, it's just a whole thing for me. Uh I have a lot of like mental anxiety. <laughs> um, I am an overthinker, so it it could paralyze me a lot. Um, and so 
anyways, going back to the thing. So she moved to, she moved to Japan because her boyfriend had got a job and he had moved out there. Right. And so she moved out there to be with him. Soon as she got out there to be with him, he broke up with her and told her that he was moving somewhere else, but he didn't want her to be there with him. And so she, so she stayed and she was crying. And woo, woo, woo. Then she looked at across the street. She saw a ramen place. Um, so then she went there, she was going there, she was obsessed with it, and then she asked the dude to, to teach her. They didn't, they had a language barrier, she didn't speak, uh, Japanese, he didn't speak English, and so it was a lot of, like, them fighting back and forth, back and forth, right? And so, one of the things was, was that he was teaching her how to cook ramen. So first he really just had her cleaning and shit like that, and finally he had her trying to learn how to make the broth. But he used to be like, nah, the broth not it. The broth not it. And she's like, I'm doing literally everything you said. Step by step by step. And he was like, nah, you got it. Like, he was like, get the fuck out of your head. <laughs> feel it in your heart. Like, you need to feel it. Then he took her to his mama and had his mama try this the broth. And the mama was like, it's good. She just, it lacks spirit. Like, she doesn't have spirit. And she was like, how do I get that? Right? Because, you know, white people don't got spirit. <laughs> so she was like how did I get that and the lady was talking about like you just gotta feel it you gotta feel it and she was like all I feel right now is sadness and she was like put that in your bra and so she was like use the tears if you don't have laughter use the tears so she started crying and stuff like that and then as it moved forward everybody who ate her ramen was crying too but it was good because they felt the spirit they felt the mm, in it right and I love that story because she ended up loving it um, and then she ended up opening her own restaurant and she found love there as well with another guy. And so in this time he was actually Korean. Um, so sorry, this thing is like throwing me off. Like, I'm like, is that a shuttle? <laughs> and it's just the, the reflection of the ceiling fan is reflecting on glasses. Okay, so you know, I just was seeing it in my peripheral. <laughs> it was throwing me off. I was like, Jesus. Anyways, no. Um, and so I thought about, for me, I was trying to teach, I was trying to teach my friend one time how to cook. And I was teaching her how to cook. And I had her like, you know, just kind of going through things with me. Right. And I was, and I was thinking like, you know, cooking is really about feeling. And I was like, you can't really trust people you can't trust people's cooking who is antsy and who is just like chaotic, right? Because with cooking, and I'm not talking about like you just fix something real quick, like you didn't fix some tacos. No, I'm talking about like cooking, <laughs> cooking. Um, the thing about cooking is really about, it's really a calm and it's really a time of like communion, right? And the guy was showing her when he was teaching her about the broth and how to like, fix and dress the ramen he talked about like balance and the harmony between the things and he talked about how like he was like in in, in ramen there's the mountains there's the waters there's the this and that like the elements right so he acknowledged the elements of earth and how they're all coming together to to really just create this harmon harmonic environment right and I think about when I talked to y'all about before about cooking when we talked about cooking magic, right? And how you can do a whole lot of things through cooking. If you think about the whole um, traditional things of what a witch is, she has a what is it a cauldron, um, you know, and she's stirring, she's cooking. Um, and so one of the things is is not is making sure and ensuring you be more mindful of who of who you can like whose food you consume like I know for me I really can't be consuming my aunt's food because her anger her aggression is in me and I'm if I'm eating it and I'm consuming it what am I doing being very aggressive and I have been very aggressive and very angry and very loud like, beat your ass and that's usually not me it's usually I'm just usually very calm and I'll look at people in irritation or I sometimes I will amuse people but I just haven't been in that mood lately. <laughs> and um, and so you just have to watch out, like, who you, especially during this flu season, too. You have to watch who you, what food you're consuming. But other than that, um, just overall, the notion is just the fact of, like, you know, um, 
Sorry, my skin. Oh, this feels so good. Hold on. Oh, shit. <laughs> you start one place and want to go all over. Um, and so, um, I just think that was just beautiful, just taking time to be mindful. And I know that I, I have to be in a certain mood, in a certain state of mind, in a certain vibe to cook myself. Um, I love cooking. Uh, I love cooking for others. And it was funny because I was reflecting on a train today. And I was like, damn spirit. I was like, one of the things that I didn't even notice that I improved on this year was my cooking. Um, I've always cooked, but I always cooked for myself, you know, like cook for lunch and cook for my dinners and stuff like that. Um, but I hardly was like cooking for other people. And I had cooked for my friend a couple of, I cooked dinner a couple of times. Like she's had vegan meals for me a few times and she. <laughs> That bitch ate her whole plate. Um, But I don't be... (laughs) So, if it's another race, because she's Salvadorian, so if... So, with other races, I'll be like, okay, like, of course it's going to (laughs) be... I don't expect that. But I'm like, of course it's going to be good to you. (laughs) But the real issue and the real problem that I have is with the blacks. I need to know. And so, it was cool, like, my family enjoying my meals and enjoying it and really, like, loving the food. And so I was like, okay. And I got to like learn certain other new things and stuff like that that I didn't know before I moved. Um, and learning how to be a little bit more patient myself when it comes to cooking um, and things like that, right? Because I was one of those people who was anxious, who was watching the pot constantly, you know, and it was a, uh, uh, I was a cook pot ain't gonna cook. I was like, wait, uh, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever, <it's, laughs> whatever the saying is. But, um, <clears throat> Yeah, like, but overall, I wanted to talk within that story, just the beauty and the harmony that comes with cooking and the elements that are coming and working together, right? Um, I also want to just talk about how the fact that she took that risk, even though she took the risks for one thing, um, and that within itself didn't turn out right, she learned so much other stuff. She explored things about herself. She, um... She found her niche. She found the thing that she loved. And now none of that would have happened had she stayed in her comfort zone, had she stayed in her in, in America and stayed in that city, right? Or had she gone back out of fear, um, gone back out of fear instead of, uh, you know, sticking it through, sticking it out. And I thought that was really cool. Um, and I just hope that for you, you know, because we talk about purposes. We always, we're always in a conversation about purpose. And, um... You know, stuff like that. And so I just want you to know, your purpose, you may find your purpose at the most randomest time. It's, there's no um, there's no order to finding your purpose. There's no order to finding your niche. There's no order to finding the thing that you're just like, yes, this is what I'm meant to do in this world. You know what I mean? And it may not be as as, you know, so for me, when I think of purpose, I think of something really big, like something real humanitarian, like I've done established a foundation or some shit like that. But my purpose was painting. You know what I mean? Like painting. So next, going to the next one. Everything is fine. Everybody's fine. So Robert De Niro, y'all know I love me some Robert De Niro. Like y'all know. I love me some Robert De Niro. I love white actors and actresses. Like, there are some particular white actors and actresses. I'm like, honey, you could take all my money. Like, I, I, I don't have a favorite black actor or actress. Like, to me, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm thinking, like, do I? No. Damn. But why not? Maybe it's because I don't really like all the black films. Like a lot of black films that be out, the acting be trash. Or like the storyline is trash. Or you know what I mean? Like you could tell they just threw it together. Or the wigs be trash. I don't know. I mean, back in the day, I, I was into like Viola Davis. Cause maybe, maybe you had some good, good stuff. Yeah, I guess I would say like Viola. Cause there's, 
because the mainstream actors and actresses that are black, I mean, I guess I could, you know, Omar Epps is real good of an actor. He could, he could, uh, act his ass off and stuff. Um, I don't know, but there's not, there's like, they, I feel like they're typical. Like, you know what I mean? Like Kerry Washington and all of them, I feel like that's very typical to like them. Um, but like. I don't know, but I'm also hasn't been really fully into like black cinema, cinema as much, like indulging into it as much as I done before. I don't know, but it's something about like certain white actors and actresses and J Lo, <laughs> and it was funny because my mom said the same goddamn thing. She was like, "I love J Lo movies." I said, "Girl, me too." I said, "I'm not her music, but I love she. Could, she good. She a good actress to me, and I don't know why." I don't even know if that would, like, I don't know. To other people, she probably don't have no variety. But to me, the movies she be in would be good. And then I like looking at her booty, too. So I don't know. <laughs> a little gay. <laughs> I'm always going to infuse a little gay into shit. Um, but I don't know. But overall, like, I was thinking stuff like that, right? Your purpose might be just to collect rocks. Or to kick dirt around. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, like, I just want us to take the weight of the word purpose like take it down like take off the weight from it from that word and you know it's just your purpose is what you enjoy to do what the fuck do you enjoy doing if you enjoy sucking dick then that's your purpose like suck some dick like you know what I mean like it doesn't have to be so grand dear and like grandiose and like (laughs) big like your purpose don't gotta be all Beyonce level you know what I mean your purpose could just simply be to be I think our purpose in life is to be ourselves but but it's like where what how are you going to express yourself you know what I mean like um so painting is a form of expression dancing is a form of expression I thought this this girl did I tell y'all this girl got this black owned aerial dance studio? And if you know, I've been wanting to get into aerial for the longest. And she has aerial fitness, aerial yoga, and aerial dance. And I want to do the dance one. Um, so I just ran into her Sunday. And I found me a farmer's market. Did I tell y'all that? Well, that's where I ran into her. But they don't have flowers there. But you can get you some good um, fruits. I mean, fruits and veggies from the farmer's market. Um, but that's pretty much all that I had to say. I don't think I'm going to do the Animal Monday. I need to finish going into uploading these videos. But yes, back lastly again, just if you left a comment, I am not ignoring them. I just don't see them. <laughs> don't see them and it's frustrating me um because I do want to interact with people and I want to encourage people to continue to to interact with stuff too um I just wanted y'all to know like I'm just not feeling not feeling some type of way and just not acknowledging it because I am that person like if you do not respond to my I don't care how many followers you got if you don't respond to my comment like I'm like I would never follow you again (laughs) but no but I will never leave another comment and we'll leave one the next week but no I'm really not a comment um comment person um so that's why I'm just like no I didn't want to ignore this person um but they really fucked me up and I really want to go into that and give them credit where credit is due in terms of the conversation I really appreciate you guys taking the time out to comment so yeah I just wanted to say that one more time that I am sorry (laughs) um and that is pretty much conclusion of today's topic. I kind of want to do the animal Monday. I might just do a separate video. I don't know. No, no, no. I kind of want to just chill or paint. 